How's it going guys? Danny here with Pound Technology. In this video, we're gonna go over how to replace the capacitors on your original Xbox to hopefully resolve the wavy display issue. Now, before we get started, I'd like to plug our latest cable, the Pound HD Link cable for the PS2, now available on Amazon. If you missed the pre-orders with limited run, there isn't a better time to buy it than now. Amazon has extended their standard 30-day return policy to the end of January, which means if you buy it now, you can try it until January 31st and return it if you don't like it. Now, I wanna remind you guys that this is an advanced solution. It's a simple procedure, but please understand that you are proceeding at your own risk. And if you haven't seen our previous video, one, what are you doing here? And two, we've put the link in the description down below. I highly recommend watching it before continuing with this video. It lays some really important foundation. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started. Let's go over the tools you'll need, and some you don't, to do this job. We'll include links to each of these if you need to pick them up. The first thing you'll need is a good multi-bit screwdriver set. Make sure the kit you get has a Torx 10 bit, also known as a T10, and T20 bit. You'll need those to disassemble the Xbox. Next, you'll need some leaded solder. I'm using a 60% tin, 40% leaded solder. You'll want some solder wick. This isn't strictly required, but highly recommended, especially if this is your first time detaching capacitors. You also need some flux to promote solid solder adhesion. I'm using Kester 186 No Clean Liquid Flux in a 2 ounce bottle. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. They also come in smaller flux pens and paste forms. After that, you'll want some wire cutters. I've only got the ones on my wire strippers, but there are better options out there. Another optional one, some iso alcohol and Q-tips to clean off parts of the board. Replacement capacitors. I got mine off eBay. The brand shouldn't matter. I'm using Sanyo 3300 microfarad caps, rated at 6.3 volts. Last thing you'll need, of course, is a good soldering station. I do not recommend the $15 bargain bin soldering iron you might find at your local craft store. I'm using a Hakko FX888D. Once again, links to each of these products and where to get them down below. On the bottom of the Xbox, remove the four rubber pads that the Xbox rests on and set them adhesive side up off to the side. You'll need a Torx 20 bit to remove the six long screws holding the two halves of the Xbox together. Once that is complete, flip the Xbox over and lift the top of the Xbox off to reveal the disc and hard drive. You'll now require a Torx 10 bit to remove three screws holding the CD drive in place. An extended attachment may be necessary to reach the screw in the corner. Remove the respective cables from the CD and the hard drive. Do your best not to tug on the cables themselves, but rather wiggle the plastic heads back and forth to loosen them. You should now be able to remove both the CD drive as well as the hard drive from the chassis. From here, detach all the cables from the PCB. There are six ports total, including the gray ribbon cable. Using the same T10 bit as before, remove the 11 screws holding the PCB to the rest of the casing. Pat yourself on the back. You've liberated your board from the case. We'll now discuss how to remove the old capacitors in favor of new ones. Turn on your soldering iron. If you have an iron that has an adjustable temperature, I'm using 750 degrees Fahrenheit or 400 degrees centigrade. We start by identifying the three capacitors that we'll be targeting. Keeping their positions in mind, turn the PCB over and find the position they're attached to on the opposite side of the board. While holding the capacitor in one hand, use your soldering iron in the other and apply heat to the solder on the PCB. Alternate pins while wiggling the capacitor back and forth and it should slowly slide out as the solder releases. If you wish, 
use a solder wick to absorb excess solder. This will make soldering new capacitors easier later on. Use some flux to help the solder wick along if necessary. Repeat these steps for the other two capacitors. Once all capacitors are removed, we can begin soldering on new capacitors. Take your new capacitors and start with trimming off excess length. You won't need a lot, just under a quarter of an inch should be more than enough. Align the marked edge of the capacitor with the shaded section of the circle indicated on the PCB. The alignment is quite important as these capacitors are directional. This is standard across capacitors. Hold the capacitor in place with one hand as you heat the other side. Excess solder from the removal of the old capacitor are likely plugging the hole and you'll need to melt the solder while pushing on the other side to get the new capacitors in. Once the capacitors are seated, finish it off by applying a small amount of flux and a small amount of solder. Do this by applying heat to the legs of the capacitor and the PCB. Melt solder against the components, not against the soldering iron. Repeat these steps for the other two capacitors. An optional step, you can clean your PCB by taking some isoalcohol and a few cotton swabs and wiping down any excess flux around your soldering points. Assembly is exactly the opposite of disassembly. Start by sliding the PCB back into place. Be sure not to trap any essential cables under the PCB. Insert each of these cables back into place. Replace the 11 T10 screws. Plug the grey ribbon cable and the power cable into the CD drive first and set the CD drive in place. Route the hard drive power cable onto the hard drive tray and attach to the hard drive along with the far end of the grey ribbon cable. Replace the three T10 screws. Slide the top cover of the Xbox back over the Xbox. For first timers, be careful with alignment as it can be quite finicky. Place the six T20 screws back into their posts and tighten them. You place the feet of your Xbox and you're finished.
So that's it guys. I hope you found this video helpful. In our experiences, the best results come from a combination of this as well as applying power to the HD-Link cable itself. If this solution helped you guys, please let us know down in the comments below. And if it didn't, we want to hear about that as well. Hopefully there's something we can do to make it right. We have a few exciting announcements coming around the holidays and the new year. So please like us on Facebook if you haven't already. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, do whatever you're into. It really helps let us know that you guys are enjoying the content. See you next time guys.